Hello, Rob here from the Flanagan Homestead. I'm standing out by the bench that I had uh, selling pumpkins at our school pumpkin patch today. Uh, this might be a little bit of a clunky video. I don't have it as planned out as normal, but we uh, had a surplus of pumpkins in our horticulture patch at the school, and so we decided to do a sell. So um, here's a quick story on how many pumpkins we had and how small a space, because people are like, how many pumpkins can we grow in a certain area of space, and how we did on sales here. So anyway, uh, we were open for a little over one hour. I told parents they could start coming at three o'clock. Uh, class ends at 325, but my horticulture class uh, is seventh period. So we started selling at three. Some parents started coming in. I had kids out on the street flagging them down, flagging people down as they picked them up. But we went from three to four and we sold today. Actually, it was about like 415. We were pretty busy, but we sold today uh, I don't have the totals yet because uh, they were asked to put uh, scan this and pay with a credit card but I'm guessing we're at somewhere between 300 and 400 dollars worth of pumpkins sold today so it's not bad for one hour's effort we do have a lot of pumpkins left I'm going to show you something in the garden but we estimated that we had 700 uh, snowball pumpkins I did not realize we were going to get that many um, but uh, some of the things that worked, obviously I had the advantage because we let people know that help support the horticulture class. So people were uh, in a good mood there or you know, wanting to help the schools out. So that helped sales. We're by the school, but I don't know if you could see it. We're behind the tennis court, behind the shop, and nobody drives down this way. So we had kids out on the street. I, was, I had kids with signs. Uh, you saw that on the thumbnail. Uh, but uh, kids with signs out on the street flagging people down and people are saying they're putting a lot of energy into it and I said you know you really need to put energy into this we need to have the signs out there kids because a lot of times people plan to do something to support you but they're creatures of habit they pick up their kids and go home and they don't think about it and many people that came out and got pumpkins were like yeah I wanted to buy a pumpkin I forgot about it and then I saw all the people out on the street flagging us down so the flaggers in the traffic area definitely helped uh, like I said, about one hour of sales, an hour and 15 minutes of sales. We brought in between three and four hundred dollars. And uh, yeah, so let's talk more about how we grew the pumpkins. Okay, we're done with our one hour sale. I'm back out in the patch. Uh, we let kids, you know, people come out here in the patch and pick up the pumpkins or we had a stack of them on that bench out there that you saw earlier that they could just come and pick up right there. Uh, the, pe the people that came out with kids tended to want to wander out in the patch and find them out here. Uh, the adults that just swung by wanted to just pick them up uh, and grab some off the bench right there and support the program right that way. But uh, you can see we still have plenty of snowball pumpkins here uh, after, the after the fact. But uh, I, I wanted to show you just how I did this. I'm not saying this is how you should do this, but uh, learn from my mistakes. Some of the things we did right, you could do this. But uh, one of the things is with my horticulture class, uh, I don't have help all summer long. Actually, we have a gardening club that meets for one hour Tuesday and Thursday. I have another farm of my own to run. I can't be in here weeding it and doing everything. So we tried to, we wanted to grow pumpkins because there's something that we can actually control the weeds a little bit. I have. I don't know if you can see it here, uh, but it's I'm pulling up on a black landscape fabric that's six feet wide. And so what I did was I planted a row. Uh, we planted pumpkin plants about every three feet in a row. We laid down landscape fabric and that, that's six feet wide. And then we did another row on the other side of that and then landscape fabric. And so this area that's covered here, uh, there was no weeds growing, and which is a good thing because we came through and tried to weed just where we planted the rows. And you could see sitting right here and right behind me, that even with the landscape fabric down and our efforts to weed, we had plenty of weeds uh, in here, but they grew pretty well. Uh, the other, th well, the pumpkins grew pretty well. The other thing that we did that I think that was helpful, we have a very well draining soil, so I didn't worry about drowning the, pl the roots. So we actually dug a basin about a foot and a half wide and a couple inches deep and planted our starts in there. We didn't actually do seeds. We had starts that we started in the greenhouse, which is good in a way because uh, my friend down at the patch had serious issues with mice eating the seed out of the field, but we didn't. We brought starts out into the field and planted them there. But we had the basin, and for the first 
couple months, we came out and we just water, filled the basin with water and then moved on, filled the, the next basin with water and moved on. So all this area that wasn't uh, where pumpkins were, the weed areas weren't getting watered and we were conserving water. And uh, we could do the entire patch that we had and the other garden stuff, the sunflowers and the tomatoes, we could hand water them in an hour and we could do that. But uh, once the vines started to grow over the landscape fabric and we didn't have the rows, we didn't want to be dragging a hose back and forth down there and we didn't want the kids walking back and forth and ruining the vines. So at that point in time, we plopped in overhead sprinklers and watered it. But to get sufficient water, once we put the sprinklers on, it took us almost five hours to do this entire garden uh, of sprinkling and then we'd leave it off for several days and then five hours to get enough moisture down in the ground. So um, it was definitely better on water conservation when we were just hand watering the individual plants, but we, once we couldn't walk through the vines uh, anymore, we, we had to uh, overhead water. And depending on how hot it was, we'd do that twice a week or less or more, depending on, uh, on the weather. So when we planted these, the intent was not necessarily to have a sale, but we had so many of them, uh, we needed to do something with them. And um, also, uh, our levy failed on the school and we, the funds are a little bit less, so we needed to raise some money. So doing the sale was pretty good. I think we'll probably do a sale again in the future, but uh, I, having only two varieties of pumpkins, basically, the snowball and the fireball, which are really popular, and years past when we had less of them, we just kind of gave them away to teachers or people that needed them. Uh, and, and people in the community and it worked out really well but uh, if I want to do a patch in the future which I think I will do and the reason it works well for school is you know you start selling these at the beginning of October the kids come in the beginning of September we have about a month to get our class organized get a plan work on things so it'll work well with my horticulture class to go ahead and try to do this again but we won't do just two varieties of pumpkins we definitely need to have a regular orange carving pumpkin a jack-o-lantern pumpkin maybe a couple giant ones i don't know and then other people like fall decor uh, we'll probably grow some corn uh, decorative corn not corn to eat but uh, you know that has the different colored kernels or just cut stalks people like to cut stalks and tie them up on the posts on their front porch so that's something that we'll probably add. But I, th I think, you know, we obviously we had didn't sell all of this yet, but we're going to, I'm going to be putting a stand out in front of the school asking for donations and just letting people pick it up. And we'll try to move uh, some of these in other ways. So uh, for a thrown together sale, one hour uh, raising three to four hundred dollars was not bad. But uh, like I said, if we do this in the future, uh, we're going to have more of a plan for marketing these and getting these out to people and letting people know. Um, and we're going to have to develop a plan. I may let you know what we're doing with the rest of these pumpkins because there are a lot of them left. Okay, so if you're uh, planning to start a small pumpkin patch and you're wondering how many snowball pumpkins you can get, uh, I had four rows that were about 90 feet long. And in each of these, they were six feet apart. But going down the rows, we planted plants approximately three feet apart. Uh, we didn't measure it out. The kids just kind of plopped it down about three feet apart. So four rows uh, that are six feet apart, plants every three feet. And then there's a fifth row that's about half of that. And then we have about 700 snowball pumpkins. So here it is. This is our school pumpkin patch. We've started knocking down the vines and cutting the stems. You can see a bunch of the snowball pumpkins here. There is a fair amount of weeds in our patch. Uh, not terrible, but certainly not good. Uh, the interesting thing that happened here is that we were right next to the tennis courts and the vines have been growing up in, in through the fence. You can see over here there's a pumpkin that the vine grew through the fence and then it bloomed and so we have pumpkins inside the tennis court probably shouldn't have let that happen this pumpkin was growing right on right on the fencing and is stuck there so we'll be creating walkways today cutting down all these stems trying to figure out how many pumpkins we got but 
I can tell you, it's just in this small area, there's a lot of snowball pumpkins. And on the fireball pumpkins, we only had two rows of these planted similar, similarly, uh, six feet apart for the rows, three feet amongst between the plants and the rows. And it was only 45 feet long. So much smaller section, but we probably had about 70, uh, 70, 80 of the fireball pumpkins. And uh, these grew in thick as well, but you know, they're a little bit larger, so it didn't grow in quite as thick. But we do have a fair number of fireball in here. One thing I'm a little disappointed in, it was a fairly warm, dry summer, and some of these pumpkins haven't quite got their color yet. You can see this one still has green on it. This one's not, a darker yellow. This is more the color, got a shadow there. This is more the color that we're looking for in our fireball pumpkins. So uh, if we were to leave these on the vine for a couple more weeks, they might get to where we want it. But uh, people like a different variety of pumpkins anyway. So some people want maybe a little bit more yellow and less orange, or in this case, even a green pumpkin. All right, I hope this video wasn't too jumbled. Uh, I wasn't even planning to make a video today, but I thought you'd be interested in this. And uh, as, as I've been making this video, I've had more and more people coming up and, and say, hey, I hear you selling pumpkins and wandering in. So I stop what I'm doing. I don't even <laughs> remember what I said on the last clip, but uh, and help them out a little bit. And then I come back here. So I'm going to leave my slab here, the, the slab of wood. I cut this off my property, it's just a little display bench. And the pumpkins on here, I'm just going to leave it out for the public. I am going to leave a little sign here that has the barcode to make a payment. And I'll, I'll just, I'll use Facebook and Instagram just, just to let people know that there's still some pumpkins out there. Help themselves. Please scan the barcode and make a payment. If they do, that'll be awesome. If they don't pay, I'll survive. Another side note as I'm cleaning up, uh, how you take payments makes a big difference. Um, obviously, I showed you they scan that and they can play with, pay with a credit card. I do have a credit card reader for my phone because of my Christmas tree farm. I, I wish I would have taken the time with the district to set it up so that they could just swipe a card because the people that came and scanned it and then it was a pretty clunky system. You had to go, you know, select which school you're supporting, which club, and then you had to go to buy and then back to cart and then it unfortunately the company that we're set up with asked them to put in all their home address and phone number and all this and uh, uh, several people expressed frustration and how long it took to run through that system so uh, i know why the district wants us to uh, they don't want the handling of funds it's just a security thing uh, di di people taking money uh, by hand that's the school district property uh, it doesn't matter what club you run they don't they prefer not to use cash. So I completely understand wanting to use a card and just going straight into the school account there. But uh, before I do this again, I'm gonna ask the district if there's a way to set it up so that I could just put my card reader on my phone and they swipe the card and it goes directly uh, to the gardening club, the school district and then the gardening club. All right, and as we speak, we've got people out there shopping for tomatoes and pumpkins right now. I'm gonna clean up and be out of here in just a minute. But thanks for joining me on the Flanagan Homestead, where Christmas trees are my business, teaching, including horticulture, is my job, and outdoor projects are my passion. Hope to see you again soon. Be blessed, everyone.